We finally got into the lobby, guys. And I think it's going to be a pretty damn good one. I'm excited to cast some TVZ. I kind of want a laser to win just so that we have a Zerg continue on in the bracket. Because we so rarely do. But, you know, Lambo's still alive as well. So we are not without Zergs today. Who will make it farthest? Who will be the best Zerg of the Open Cup number 125? Bottom right, it is here, Marine. Top left, it is a laser. Potential dream hack match this week. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Potentially. <clears throat> I was actually trying to see the bracket. The EU playoffs do start tomorrow, so... <sighs> there it is. Yeah, laser face is clam, and then air marine face is harsome. Oof. That's tough for a laser. That's very tough for a laser. Even though here Marine and Clam do have different styles of TVZ, uh, I still think that this could be a... Oh, can I use a very fancy word correctly? Is it a bellwether? Something that warns you of the future. I spelled bellwether wrong. Okay. An indicator or predictor of something. I think I used it right, you guys. I think I did. It is also the leading sheep of a flock. With a bell on its neck. That's where it comes from. Hope you guys learned something new today. Yes, it could be a bellwether. Of how a laser performs versus Clem. But here, Marine, he's facing a Protoss, so it's really not the same. But also just, I uh, feel like it is kind of rip -harsome, but we will see, we will see. Let's go ahead and update the title, too, now that we have a pretty cool game. <clears throat> and then, you know, promptly forget to update the title. <laughs> As usual. And while I'm at it, why don't I go ahead and make some bets? Why don't I just let you guys gamble? Gamble, gamble, gamble. No, I pressed the wrong fucking button! Well, that sucks. So you guys are getting a two-minute ad right now. Who wins this best of three? There we go. I'll give you guys two minutes, because there's a fucking ad run right now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what is happening right now? Oh, here Marine's actually going for a three racks opener. That is very unique. Very unique. Okay. I haven't seen this one in a while against Zerg. I haven't seen this one in a while. Feels like it was all the rage a year ago or something like that. And then no one no one did it again. So a laser, he... Okay, so th this actually is a really, really good game to point out something that I tried to bring up on the DreamHack cast. And I probably fumbled a little bit. Because I want to make it clear that a laser still has his way of playing. He's still a very good Zerg. He's still a very good ZVT -er. Um He definitely does think through a lot of things. I don't know if I necessarily agree with Katz in that he's like a thinking man Zerg. Not to say that he never thinks whatsoever, but just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't really consider a laser like a calculated Zerg to me, you know? But anyways, um, what I was trying to point out was that a laser doesn't really have the most reliable scouting. Um, at least in ZVT, in my opinion. Like, that last ZVP that we just saw him in, he was great. He had lings everywhere, he had creep everywhere, he had overloads everywhere. That was totally fine. Um, but for, for Terran, I feel like he does have very limited scouting a lot of the time. So right now we can see that even, you know, is putting his overlord as far back as possible. He doesn't want to get killed. But uh, on Curious Mines, yeah, I guess if they have two Marines, there is that. They could kill the overlord. Uh, but this overlord still won't see a whole lot, right? It doesn't see supply depot counts. It doesn't see if there's Hellenes being balled up or Marines. Obviously, it can't even try and dip in and see if there's a three racks coming along the way. And a laser is going to still play safe because he doesn't really know what's happening. So he's still going to get a Baneling Nest. Well, I mean, it's not like it would... Well, actually, if this was a Hellbat push, that Baneling Nest would still be late. But uh, as far as for this 3 racks push, it does look like it might be okay. Uh, well, actually, if here Marine just stims in, you know what? He's going to stim in. Yeah. There's kind of a... You know, the approach here with the 3 racks opener can sometimes be to just oppress the Zerg. Really? Just be like, here, 20 Marines right outside your creep. What the fuck are you going to do about it? 
And then if you do see that they are woefully underprepared, you can just stim in. So that's that's the real tricky part about this build. That's what makes it tricky, okay? This part looks like it's a move free victory, okay? La 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 your way to an MMR. Okay, that's fair. But what is usually tricky about this opener is that if you don't punch it as the tearing side of things, the Zerg still has to consider you punching it. They still have to be like, well, I can't really get drones because you're in control and maybe you're going to make more Marines appear on my side of the map and I'm not really sure. And it was really hard for the Zergs to figure out exactly how to play against it. But as far as the Blitz here, I mean, that can be game ending. It is not, it's not game ending in this game, but it did do a lot of damage. Um, that is a decision made. From here, Marine. Because the other thing about just kind of having those Marines hover around the creep spread is one, you would stop the creep spread on that particular area. So if the Marines were hovering around here, it's not really going to be creep spread. But then more importantly, it's going to provide the next uh, the next step of engagement, right? A little bit easier. So if the Marines are just literally hovering there, then Suddenly the tanks arrive too, and then it goes from being a weird marine ball with no siege and no medivacs to suddenly being a more ter typical Terran army that has uh, an anchor to it as well as mobility to it. So it's it can be very scary. It'd be very scary. And you don't actually have those 20 marines still alive to add on to it. Now, when a here marine does move out, He's not going to have those extra 20 marines. This is also a good find, though. I mean, the, the queen number is here. Jeez, eight of them have died, so... Another good find for here, marine. And that last queen will not go down, but the banelings, that is a very dangerous game to play for a laser that was nine, I want to say, banelings, with, uh, you know, no speed. That That is absolutely something that here, marine could target down. And I think a laser is giving chase to make sure that he never gets to that position where he unloads and then chases after them. Here, Marine is going to meet up with the rest of the army, and here's that push that I was talking about, so that you could have had maybe 20 more Marines, but then you wouldn't have done that early game damage. Which one's better? Depends on what damage you do. In this game, I do believe that a Here Marine did enough damage. And plus, the Queen grab there. Uh, a laser also just had to... There are so many things to account for that one of the things that got lost in a game like this would be upgrades. So no 1-1 one, one, and no centrifugal hooks. That is the real 100% uh, killer. GG. But it kind of all starts with a laser having zero idea. Zero idea. But, you know, then the argument would be, uh, you know, for a laser here, well, I would have seen he had Marines, but there'd be no way for me to know that was a 3 rack just a 2 one, one And that is true. You know, you see Marines, usually a Terran's pretty good about hiding the actual number of Marines that they have in a game like that. Or whatever you send in just gets killed before they can see the full extent of the Marines, right? Um, and then you don't know until five minutes pass, until like 4.50 or whatever it is passes, until the actual two medevac timing passes. And then you're like, oh, it's just the Marines on the ground. But by then, you've you've already been notified it's a bunch of Marines on the ground because they just simmed in and killed all your Queens. Easy peasy game one for this guy. It's here, Marine. Let's operate a laser. Playing on Glittering Ashes, uh, which, you know, is going to really take away the power. A lot of power. Not all of the power, but a lot of power of here, Marine's build last game, which would work out on Erlingrad just a little bit better. We're curious minds. It was curious minds. So if this was Berlingrad, that would be another way to do it. Yeah, Curious Mines, Berlin Grad, I think both good options for what Here Marine did last game. Glittering Ashes, not so much. Not so much. The extra three, four seconds. It's not it's not an incredible amount, but the extra three or four seconds in a StarCraft 2 game can be quite a big deal. We don't have We don't have big jumps in in rush distances. I believe it's been between 31 and 37. But I think we had a couple of 40s in the past, maybe like 140 in the past. Anyways. 
I think for Glittering Ashes, it's not just about the rush distance, which by the way, the rush, rush distance on Wikipedia is gonna be high ground ramp, high ground ramp. So there, there, there. Up, up, up. Uh, but it's also a bit of the twisty and turniness of it, right? So that three racks build wouldn't necessarily be going from here to here. Could, I suppose. If you really think you got the jump on the on the Zerg, it could. But usually it goes towards the third base, right? Which is a little bit more of a wind down and up a ramp as well. So it's just it's just there's a lot of reasons why it wouldn't work so well in this game. I really don't expect it this time around. A 2-1-1 though, an actual 2-1-1, that's totally fair. Maybe even a 3CC 2-1-1. Uh, so far, Hammerin has not grabbed his second gas. And we are not getting NSCV over there either. Yeah, I think it's a 3CC build. Thank you for becoming a member. Apt Ape Art. Thank you for that tier one sub. Gifted tier one sub. Bam, bam, bam. Still no gas, so just doubly confirming the third CC. Uh, again, a laser's overlord, very cautiously placed, never going to be sniped down by a marine opener. Is also not going to see the supply depots, the Hellenes being bunched up, or the marines, or even dip in and see the corner of a starport. It just, it's apparently not going to happen. This one could actually dip in and see what's building, and I feel like it should. But that's, that's the laser part coming in, right? Like, any other Zerg does this, and I'm 100% on board the idea of suiciding it. I think it would work out. I think it'd be very good information. A laser just doesn't seem like he ever wants to do that. Even if it's prime position, even if, again, he really has no idea what's happening. Which I, I think is very odd. I did get a lesson from a laser. It's up on my YouTube if you ever want to check it out. And it's not like he doesn't think about these things. You know, when I said I wouldn't necessarily agree with Katz's perception of him as a thinking Zerg, it's not because I don't think he thinks. <laughs> like, obviously, he does do a lot of thinking about it. But when I was talking to a laser about this matchup, you know, he definitely said, well, the first five minutes, it's really just reacting to what the Terran's doing. So... It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Um, and then afterwards, it's, uh, it's a little more loosey-goosey, but I can't really react to a whole lot of things if you don't, if you don't necessarily scout the thing. And this is really just no scouting, it's just actually no scouting. Because, uh, again, a lot of the Zergs might be suiciding an overland right now. They might hit a link across the map and try and see what's in the natural. In this case, the scouting comes from the defensive overlords. It comes from seeing the Hellions, right? And then you can kind of guess what it means when it's only four on the map, or if they go up to six, then maybe you definitely should be worried about eight, or even upwards to 10, something that you Thermal's been playing around with. But if you see only four, that's a pretty good indication that it is a 3cc build. If you see six, it's uh, it's middle of the road. Speaking of middle of the road, Viking opener. Could still go into Banshees, but that's not really what the people do nowadays. It's not hip. It's not cool. Uh, it does usually just out go into this Liberator. So a laser should be wary about that. One spore probably in the main and natural, I guess. And the third base could be covered by queens. That's if he's picking up what uh, Eomarine is putting down. He had the slightest bit of a scout, the slightest bit, on a misplaced supply depot. <laughs> And that, and that was it. But it was a very, very late supply depot. So believe it or not, this actually told him it's a 3cc build. So that's kind of cool. Just not what type of 3cc build it is. We did go up to eight Hellions. That's quite a bit of map control. Very unlikely they all get killed too. So you can bring them back home and help out. And oh, well, yeah, that's not going to happen. That sucks. That actually really sucks. 75 minerals down the drain plus the drone. Hello? Sucks. Not the absolutely greediest build you can do as a Terran player, but it's still a pretty greedy build. And here, Marine's not getting punished for it whatsoever. A laser did not pick up on it all that quickly, 100% anyways, but certainly with the Ling Scout at least put away, as soon as he got the Ling Scout, which I want to say was around 4.30 or something like that, you can kind of put away the idea of a Hellbat push because you would need so many more supply depots. I know for a fact that there is going to be a Terran who plays on this idea and then just never gets supply depots at the front against a laser. Because again, especially a laser, I feel like other Zergs would try harder to get a Ling in in some part. Or maybe just coincidentally get a Ling in. A Rainer who makes 10 extra Lings to go for a bit of a run by, right? But anyways, I know that is a Terran that's going to do this. They're going to go for an armory build, and they're not going to build any of the supply depots in the front. They're going to hide them in the natural. 
And they're not, you know, they're not gonna have a wall. Yes, that is the downside. But the upside is that I'm sure they could trick a couple of Zergs. Uh, anyways, that is not what's happening here. It is not what's happening. A laser is now going up to five bases. But keep in mind, this might be more of a replacement fourth, <laughs> fifth base, as uh, that does sometimes happen in this matchup. As much as it works out in case you do make a boo-boo and you don't save your fifth hatchery for whatever reason, that you can just pull your drones right to the other base. Um, eh, still not very good. This often is also their macro hatchery, if you will, their fifth base. So start to have some trouble spending all of their money on lings. So definitely need to save this one. This one's under attack by Hellbats, which spread pretty damn well. Eh, worse on the tail end, but still. That hatchery already at half health might be in here marine sites for later. We do have a Baneling roll-by that is going to get some decent connections. Uh, very good connections, actually. It took out the entire reinforcement squad, really. But that could have been worse if it also hit the SCDs, right? Uh, she is where you gla- Okay, no. Please don't do that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no! Woo, here Marine actually just got hardcore punished. Because I would say that the loss of the reinforcements was okay. It obviously isn't great. It's it's okay. It's because a laser was still under pressure from the two medivacs. Uh, but that, that very quickly changed, didn't it? Picked up, went in the main, got denied, went towards the fifth base again, and got killed. So that, that just means that here Marine has zero placement on the map that that is quite terrible the double whammy there i think is what's really making it terrible and the laser's gonna get another one by two uh, is it gonna distract here marie maybe a little on the front but still does pick up need to get his reinforcements over to that third base asap and it does pull the SCVs, so we're still good on the SCV counts. Widow Mine is not going to get that good connection, and Laser is watching out for those defensive Widow Mines. But more being produced. The Marines have unloaded, and they are going to come back to try and help out. They absolutely have to try and help out. That fourth base could be under attack. Oh, the third already was. Wow, this has gone so terribly for here, Marines. So quickly as well. This is the third CC. And that is going to be that. I think there are some burrowed banelings that just collided there, too. Mm-mm-mm. I mean, it's game. It 100% is game. <laughs> I'm actually a little surprised that Hearmarine still landed after the third CC died. Third CC doesn't die, I think I'm, uh, I'm understanding, but uh, the fourth was canceled and the third literally died. So that's not, there's not much coming back from that one because it's not like he was killing two hatcheries himself. And it really did snowball off of the Baneling run by that killed a lot of army. I mean, they were very efficient banelings in that manner. They were. But again, if the medivacs and their units survive and a here marine has a little bit more control over the game, any type of control over the game, then I think it doesn't snowball as much. A laser still has things to worry about back at home, right? So he can't fully commit to this run by counterattack, whatever you want to call it. And here marine also has a little more scouting as well in a game like that where you have a little bit of control. Maybe he doesn't really get surprised by this gigantic run by. Or again, it's a bit smaller. It, it just, it, it was really one thing leads to another in a very terrible sense. One marine squad dies, the second one gets picked off, and then the third one tried to do its best, is still trying to do its best, because this is really the third one. <laughs> it's not going to be good enough. So much creeps for it, so many bases, so many banelings. Here, marine might have a decent supply right now, but it is a facade, basically. The third CC only just finished. It is kind of amazing that the Hear Marine can still have a decent supply, isn't it? <laughs> it's just, it's... And even though you're like, well, yeah, because it's only his SCV count that hurts right now, Zombie Grub, his armor count's still fine. No, and his TVZ, that doesn't, that's not it. That's, that's really not all it matters. If this is a TVP and the army supplies, well, they're not similar anymore. <laughs> GG, there you go. If it was a TVP and it was 90 to 90, I'd be yelling at Hear Marine, go, 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 right? Like, fucking take advantage of what you have there. Uh, assuming that the Protoss also sacrificed units in those run-bys. I'd say go, go, go. 
hundred percent. But it doesn't work the same against the Zerg, especially when you were a completely reset. Again, it wasn't like he had twenty Marines and four Medivacs killing a base, and it that's go time. No, he was complete on his side of the map. Go time would have taken fucking forever. It would have been slow time. Anyways, uh, and it wouldn't have worked out. So you know, it, it looks like it might be okay. Oh, my supplies are fine. No, that's not how it works. That's not how the matchup works. Zerg gets two, three, four attempts to take down an, an army supply. And with the creep spread backing them up, it usually works out in their favor. So that was also a very one-sided game. At the end of the day, that was pretty one-sided. And now we get a game three, where maybe we get even-sided game? Even-sided game for a zombie group, please? Top right here, Marine. Bottom left, a laser. If I were to face a laser, I'd do what I talked about. My my one chance at killing a laser in a TVZ. I'd not build supply depots at the front, pretend I'm going 3cc, and then just held that all in them. If I won, I'd be a freaking genius. I'd be applying for coaching positions ASAP. You know that as soon as you try it, of course, is when a laser does get lings into your natural and sees that it is a fake and you feel like a fool. So there's always that. Here, Marine tried to play super straight up. Uh, again, pretty greedy in that last game. And as far as the build worked, it, it, it did. It was fine. He got away with it. And his first drop was totally fine. It was the loss of the reinforcements in such a brutal fashion. It really was all of his reinforcements all bunched up together into losing the drop into pure chaos. So here, here, Marine, you know, if he had just said, oh shit, I messed up really hard, let's just turtle. There's other problems with that, right? So here, Marine did what he tried, what he did, which was go out on the map again with the four medevacs and like 12 Marines or whatever it was. Then they weren't home to help against the huge counterattack. Well, yeah, he could have left them at home and just been a, a little, like, crybaby Terran. Like, oh, the Zerg hurt me. I need a turtle. Ah. He also would have died for many other ways. A laser still would have had the map as his playground. So maybe his attack doesn't show up when the game, doesn't kill a third CC. I would definitely argue that if he had at everything back at home. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter because it still would be wave after wave after wave. And here, Marine would be struggling to keep up. So no matter how you slice it, your marine is in a difficult spot. Very knowledgeable and good analysis. Thank you. I try. I want to see some nitus in this best of. Ah, very rare. I feel like you came into a restaurant and you asked for, I don't know, Kobe beef or something. And I was like, ah, yes. Great taste, sir. Unfortunately, that might just be out of your price range. Or in this case, it would be more like, ah, yes, but sir, that is out of meta. I, I apologize. We do not have any. Slender Storms really aren't, uh, <laughs> not even a laser really does them anymore. And I think a laser was especially partial to them. Before they were literally the meta, before that Nidus Worm BlizzCon. Holy shit, that was a bad BlizzCon, guys. Oh, Lord. We talk about bad metas in StarCraft and Basically, if everyone agrees, Stormhost and uh, Broodlord Infester was bad. And those were definitely the most uh, egregious. Is that the right word in pronunciation? But, dude, that, that BlizzCon with Dark Rainer, that that was the week where Swarmhost, um, Nidus Worm, but Nidus Worm just in general, was so freaking popular. Oh, it was so bad. It, it is actually... That, they made, that made that end year tournament in... in Sufficient in my eyes. Like, read you on that one, please. Anyways. Um, I'm trying to say is Laser, I think, like Nidus from before that. He was someone who would Nidus Worm once. Not every best of three, but just, yeah, more, more often, I think. Him and Bly. Then it was the meta and everyone was doing it. And then it died down for whatever reason. I forget. Was it nerfed? I don't remember. It was nerfed. Yeah. And then we still had some people do it occasionally. Again, more likely Bly than anyone else would do it. But I feel like I haven't seen a laser do it and I just remember this matchup in, in yeah, a year, maybe? 
That might be an exaggeration. I'm sure he's done it at some point. But I'm just afraid it won't be happening here, sir. I'm afraid so. Unfortunately, you go into a west restaurant and you're like, can I have some Wagyu beef? And they look at you and they go, sir, this is Applebee's. You cannot. Here we went for the 3cc build again, by the way. So not much talk about a laser. Again, missing that exact information. But this time, okay, this time around he actually did get into the natural a little bit. So he saw the supply depots. He saw that it was Hellions. He sees that it's Stim. No question about mech, which Hammerin very rarely does anyways. And that is good enough. What is dying? How is... What is... There you are. This Liberator might get another couple of drones if it target fires? No. It does not. Here Marine tries to go into the third base again with the mass amount of Hellions that he built up, but Laser literally made a wall. That was kind of neat. Literally made a wall there. A laser? Is he gonna go for fast spire? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Two thousand atmospheres. Bringing back the fast spire. All right then. Very unlikely that here Marine's gonna go for an eight racks, but I do feel like this would be another example of a potential punish. Uh, you know, yesterday we even we yeah, it was yesterday we talked to Scarlet and Need. And Scarlet mentioned that in the game versus Epic, she just kind of forgot to scout for an Arox. It just flew out of her head. She didn't. She forgot to scout for it. And so she had it on Mutas when she was already uncomfortable anyways, because it was a BC opener. It was a very interesting game overall, and a super sick series, actually. Epic did just play really, really good. I'm really sad I didn't make it into playoffs. But, anywho. That is usually the next thing you scout. So there's a lot of builds that come into the first five minutes of this matchup that the Zerg has to be wary of. A lot of Hellbat timings. A 2-1-1 timing, uh, that three racks we saw in the first game, or even a four racks if you're Cure. Uh, you know, two racks proxy, so on and so forth, right? But then, after five minutes, you might say, oh, it's all Gucci, it's, you know, waiting for the, the push out with the two tanks a lot of the time. And then it's like TVZ, you know, you just do the thing. But don't forget to scout for an eight racks. It's not an eight racks this game anyways, as I was saying. Here, Marine is not really doing that too often nowadays. But regardless, I mean, this was a eight racks. This would be a beautiful start. <laughs> he gets a fifth base. The ten meters are gonna pop out and probably surprise here, Marine. Because much I talked about a laser scouting. You know, it's kind of difficult for a Terran to get that full-on scouting to 100% see that Aspire is there, and he has not. So that's gonna be a surprise. But is it really going to be a punishing surprise? Kind of just matters on the context. Are the medivacs loaded up? Or are they already unloaded? Are the lings nearby? Okay, there's the first sight in the mutas. Lift, leave, go back to another wood of mine as well. And then maybe a few missile turrets back at home. It is a fourth CC. And this is something that a laser is just predicting. But even though it's a fourth CC, your marine is not going to be deterred from aggression. And even though it's Mutas, he's not going to be so scared of this game that he just runs back home. And with this push... And here, Marine also, by the way, never opening up with tanks. Always just going right into Widow Mines. He does have a favorable start. Yeah, okay. Favorable start uh, to this game. To this moment of the game, I guess. Ling, Bane, Ling, Muta versus Marine Widow Mine. Marine would have mine so far kicking butts. That hatchery is a goner and a laser is a goner as well. That's just, that's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right then. All freaking one-sided games. And here Marine does take the 2-1.